a lot of investors are in love with the idea of companies that raise their dividends for decades. After all, if your goal is passive income, there is nothing better than a stock with 20 plus years of dividend growth, right? Well, yes and no. Let's find out. The SPDR S&P Dividend ETF, ticker symbol SDY, tracks the S&P High Yield Dividend Aristocrats Index. The index is comprised of companies that have consistently increased their dividends for at least 20 years and are members of the S&P 1500 Index. I repeat, 1500. It has a relatively high expense ratio compared to the big ETFs of uh, Vanguard and BlackRock and has 20 billion and 400 million dollars of assets under management. For all the investors from the EU watching this, there is an equivalent ETF with ticker symbol SPYD in Europe, which is identical to the one I'm talking about, so everything I say will apply to it as well. Right here, we have to pause and make an important distinction. A lot of people know about dividend aristocrats, which are what the ETF with ticker symbol NOBO and OBL follows. But this ETF is different in two important ways. First, instead of getting the companies out of the S&P 500 index, SDY gets them from the S&P 1500 index, which are the 1500 biggest companies in the USA. The consequences of that are two, one positive and one negative. The positive is that it might get companies which are a bit under the radar and so are potentially undervalued, unlike the holdings in the S&P 500, which are one of the most followed companies on the planet. The negative is that the average company will be smaller and therefore a bit riskier. And the second difference with the standard dividend aristocrats is a small one, but I have to mention it as well. Instead of raising their dividends for 25 years, the companies in SDY have been doing it for 20. All right, the next key thing we need to know about SDY is that once it gets all the companies, according to the previously mentioned criteria, it ranks them according to dividend yield. Whenever I see that, I instantly get a little bit uncomfortable. Generally to me, it's a red flag, and I will explain why a bit later in the video. For now though, Let's see what the ETF's performance has been. For the past one year, the return has been 2.63%, which has grossly underperformed the S&P 500, and we will see in a bit why. The annual performance for the past five years is a little under 8%, 9.40% for the past 10 years, and 8.69% since the creation of the fund. These numbers are with dividends reinvested. Talking about dividends, let's see how the fund does in that regard, which is after all, why you are probably interested in it. The fund's current yield is 2.5%, which is something that immediately catches my attention. For a dividend aristocrat ETF that has companies ranked by higher yields and underperforms the S&P 500, I would personally expect and want nearly double that yield. I will talk more about that when I give my opinion on the fund. The growth rates have been 6.32% annually for the past five years and 7% for the past 10. It's not that the growth is bad in isolation, it's actually decent, but for an ETF that prides itself on having companies that increase their dividends and has a starting yield of 2.5%, I would expect a bit more. Anyways, moving to the composition of the fund. As you can see, currently, the three biggest sectors of the ETF are the industrials, consumer defensive, also known as staples, and the utilities. The industrial sector is the sector that has in it companies engaged in manufacturing and transportation. Their performance tends to correlate with economic cycles. So during economic expansions, the increased business activities, construction and infrastructure development, etc., drive growth in this sector. However, industries can be vulnerable during economic downturns when demand for industrial products and services decreases. The consumer staple sector includes companies that produce everyday essential products that people use regularly, like food, beverages, um, cleaning supplies, tobacco and basic household items. Consumer staples are considered defensive because people need these products no matter what the economy is. The utilities sector includes companies that provide essential services related to electricity, gas and water. The sector is also considered defensive and stable because it provides essential services that people and businesses need consistently regardless of economic conditions. Demand for utility services remains relatively constant, making the sector less sensitive to economic ups and downs compared to other sectors. These three sectors make up over half of the fund. Here is the reason why. As you remember, the fund screens for companies that have increased yields for at least 20 years. This naturally means that they should have been around for at least 20 years and are in a steady industry that doesn't have huge fluctuations. These types of companies are exactly the type you would consider old and boring stocks. In other words, not great, not terrible. For all you movie junkies, I hope you got the joke. 
It is obvious how the screener for 20 years of growing dividends affects the sector composition by the fact that the technology sector, which is the biggest sector in the S&P 500, is only 6.5% of SDY. Why? Well, because most of the tech companies either weren't around or weren't paying dividends 20 years ago. All right, speaking of companies, let's see what the top stocks are, which is something I always like to look at because it shows me the results of all the screeners. As we can see, nothing really surprising here. We have 3M, one of the biggest and oldest industrial companies, and a dividend king, which means they paid rising dividends for over 50 years. Realty income, a real estate investment trust, which is a dividend aristocrat. We have a few utilities, the two biggest energy companies, Exxon and Chevron. We also have the OG of the tech space, IBM. The fund isn't very top heavy, with the top 10 out of the 139 stocks, comprising 18% of the ETF. Looking at the composition, nothing really surprises me, and it's exactly what I would expect to see. I don't like some of these stocks, and I will talk about that in a bit, and you will see what the main issue with SDY is. Others, I actually have in my portfolio. Speaking of that, if you want to see my top four stocks and ETFs for the current economic and geopolitical environment we are in, go to the link in the description, click on it, and I will send it for free to your email address. The report will always be up to date regardless of when you are watching this video because I'm constantly updating it. Okay, so now that you have the data, let's move to my opinion of the fund. Let me just start with the observation that the overall idea of the ETF is good, but the execution has been a failure. The idea of putting an index that screens for established companies that have raised their dividends for decades and are still around after recessions, market crashes and wars is obviously a very good one. The problem is that the way this has been executed is flawed because of the lack of additional screeners. If you have followed me for any time and watched my other videos, you know that I always like to have at least one, ideally several quality filters applied to the ETFs. These are things like payout ratio to screen for dividend sustainability, earnings growth, profit margins, and all sorts of metrics like these. That way you are protected from low quality companies gaming the system and creeping into your portfolio, which is exactly the case here. To add fuel to the fire, the index orders companies according to their dividend yield without any regard for the sustainability of the dividends. This is a disastrous way to structure an index because it will always push the so-called yield traps to the top. For those who are newer, an yield trap is a company that has a very appealing and high dividend yield that is either rapidly losing on the share price front and in danger of cutting the dividend. And this is exactly what we see here. The top company, 3M, is a great example of a company that literally games the system to get into the index. It raises the dividend with pennies to keep its status as a dividend king. And since there is no filter saying that the dividend should have been raised by a certain percentage, they can literally raise it by one cent and they get in. I made a video about 3M and why I sold it last summer which you can check in the description, but the point is that this is not the first time this happens. Because I had invested in DTF before, I had been tracking it for a while, and I remember how at one point the top company in the fund was VF Corp. And it stayed like that right until they cut their dividend. And at one point, Walgreens was also the leader as the top company with over 3%, and they also recently cut their dividend. So when I observed that, I saw a pattern which made me sell the fund. Not because it was going to crash or even because I was at a loss, because I wasn't. This is a pretty steady fund that will probably keep delivering average price and dividend growth. And that might be okay for some people that are a lot more conservative in their approach. The reason I sold it was the fact that companies in poor financial condition were constantly allowed to climb to the top. That showed me the main weakness of SDY. When you have no quality filters, you rank stocks by dividend yield and you allow companies that hike their dividends with pennies to game the system and get in, the results are what I just described. I generally try to avoid situations like these, both for me and my students. If you want to see more of the way I think about investments or potentially work closer with me to start or improve your investing, then go to the link in the description and sign up for my free investing masterclass. As I said, if the yield of the ETF was at least double that, let's say around 5%, and the dividend was growing the way I showed you it was, with 5 to 7% yearly, that would make it worth it for me. Again, it depends on your profile. For some people, the old, boring companies and the lack of price volatility might be what they need. Also, the industrial sector, which is a top one for the fund, should be in a very good position in the next years if the USA continues its onshoring of manufacturing trend, as I have said in my other videos.
But at 2.5% current yield, there are just a lot of other better opportunities, in my opinion, with superior dividend growth, quality, and share price appreciation. I recently talked about one of these ETFs that I have in mind, which you should already be able to see on your screen. It's a great example of a superior fund with superior companies and a way to structure the filters of the index that only allows quality names to get in. So click on it right now and I will see you there.